Good evening and welcome to this service of remembrance. Our Stephen ministers here at Fields United Methodist Church believe that, and we all know, that this is a very difficult time uh, for those who have lost loved ones, especially during the holiday season. So this is an opportunity for us to gather as a community of faith, no matter what church you're from, and to remember and to reflect and gain comfort and hope during this difficult time. Uh, after worship, uh, our Stephen ministers will be available for prayer if you'd like to have prayer. So let us go to our Lord in an attitude of prayer this evening. Lord God, we give you thanks for gathering us in your house this evening to offer our prayers, to offer our, our joy and our sorrows uh, to you. Bless us this evening, uh, comfort us, guide us, and enable us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down upon them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that's from Revelations chapter 7, verses 15 through 17. Lord, keep us ever mindful of the depth and breadth and height of your church throughout the world and throughout time. Remind us of the dear ones, now hidden from our eyes, who taught and fed and encouraged and nurtured us, who now stand before your throne in everlasting life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. reading is from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. sure by now that all of us who have lost loved ones over this past year or years have been given much advice on how to deal with our loss. We've received reading materials and we have materials in the back as well. And we're searching for something that will make the pain go away because it's painful, isn't it? Uh, there's folks that, who are no longer with us that we celebrated for so many years. We need to end the loneliness, especially during the holidays when there's so many memories that go on, so many good times, so many traditions that we have. Folks, I stand before you this evening with no words of wisdom, nothing that can take that away. Yet in the midst of all of this, we keep asking the questions why. Why did this happen? Why did this happen this time of year? Why me? Why them? There are no answers to those questions, yet in the midst of our loss, there is hope. And maybe that is the reason we are gathered in God's house this evening. You know, joy is not necessarily bubbly laughter. You know, that cheerleader type mentality that everything is great. Joy is nothing more than the affirmation of knowing that during our times of loss, during our times of, of happiness and celebration, God is with us, even in our darkest day. So whether or not we set up a Christmas tree or not, whether or not we put lights on our home or inside, God is in the midst, calling us to come, as the scripture said, 
come all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And it is our Lord Jesus that will give us the rest. There's a scripture text that is very near and dear to my heart. I'd like to read this evening. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. What we are celebrating this evening is the light that is coming into the world. What we are celebrating this evening is God's presence, even in the time of our darkest hour, even in the times of our mourning. There is hope for this new beginning. The gift of the God's presence may not touch us immediately. There are no miraculous cures or, or nothing that's going to knock us off our chair and suddenly everything's okay. But I think that what God gives us is the gift of endurance to get us through, to give us, to give us the grace, to give us the, the power, to, to offer us the wisdom to get through these holidays and these dark days when we remember those we have lost uh, and offer us hope for tomorrow and give us rest for our weary souls. So what about today? I say don't deny your memories because they're to be cherished. Don't deny your loss because it's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be angry at God. Just read the Bible. Read the Psalms. How many people were angry at God yet God still provided for them. God will give us the sustaining power of God's grace that will enliven our souls. God's grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. And God will walk with you. God will carry, if need be, that old poem which is so relevant today. It talks about footprints in the sand. Remember that one? You know, and there's, in fact, I, I have it here. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky, and each scene I know is footprints in the sand. Sometimes there are two sets of footprints. Other times there are one set of footprints. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there have been only one set of footprints in the sand. Why? When I needed you the most, you have not been there for me. The Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints is when I carried you. That's why Mary Stevens. You see, God will carry us. God will carry us through the darkest days because we can't carry ourselves alone. And that is the hope of the season. The joy of the season is that our Lord Jesus Christ will give us the sustenance, will give us the courage to stand unafraid as we as we go through the holidays. So celebrate in your way. Celebrate the presence of God in your life. There is hope. And God promises hope. God promises to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Now let us sing together uh, the hymn of promise. <laughs>
Psalm 1021. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. When the name of your loved one is called, we would invite you to come forward and light a candle in remembrance. And if you would like to say something about your loved one, please do. Taylor remembers Mike Power, Linda Lundgren, Jerome Ta Jerome Taylor, Owen Hendrickson, and Jen Evans. Patrick, Audrey Kirkpatrick. something I want to read. I better read it because my daughter found it on the internet. And there are some good things on the internet. I think it's a poem. Uh, it says, Missing You at Christmas. Every day without you since you had to go was like summer without sunshine and Christmas without snow. I wish I could talk to you. There's so much I would say. Life has changed so very much since you went away. I miss the bond between us, and I miss your kind support. You're in my mind and in my heart in every Christmas thought. I always feel you close, and though you are far from sight, I'll search for you among the stars that shine on Christmas night. They remembers Laverne, Richard, John, and Dorothy Dahl, and Florence and Charles Rocha. Baker remembers Bliss Baker, Salatoy Colonna, Stephen Nino, and Lee Simmer, Simmons. Fortunately for me, before she passed, she and I were able to have a conversation, and I was able to share that with him. And then he, early on, said, you know, you're 
He was more like a second father to me than a father in law. I mean, he's just and he has a daughter we never had. So I treasure that memory of him. Uh, Salvatore Kalani was is was my uh, son in law Tony's dad, and Sal was he was just such a character. And one thing I can say about him was he always was treated with this huge smile. And um, being of Italian, he came over on the boat when he was 14 to the States. Um, we would always greet you with Bella Bella. And uh, Lee Sherman, she was an 89 year old young friend of ours from Florida who passed very suddenly within a three week period, she fell ill and passed. And just was a good friend to our family. And Stephen Dino, I light a candle for Stephen because he a, was a 21 year old man who died way too soon before his time. But I light that in memory for his grandmother, Mary Louise. Ed Clack, remember Ruth Clack? Linda Kretzfer remembers Bill Kretzfer, Gertrude Kretzfer, Ethel Ritter, Margaret Chisma, Jane Lockard, and Les Lockard, and Kay Faulkner. Richard Lauber remembers Jim and Ruth Lauber. Dick Poor remembers Bob Brody. Linda Savoyich remembers Bob Savoyich and Bob and Cleo Graham. Kathy Reese remembers Marilyn Robinson and Ruth Swigel. Karen Hanlon remembers Sandy Cunningham. Sexton remembers brother and parents Rick, Esther, and George.
Neal, remembers Terrence, Herb, and Dora Moore, and Sister Sandra and Deborah. Fourth of July at a picnic. Her mother couldn't make it to the, the hospital about an hour away. It was in California, Cobo, California. And so, and then she always remembers and told us that her mother lost her, her bonnet that day. <laughs> Never did find that bonnet at that picnic. And she was she was the baby of six children, and uh, she used to tell me that they would help themselves to the farmer's watermelons at night and have a good time. Well, I think they're all in heaven now and having a good time having all the watermelon they want. Thank you. June Miller remembers Ralph Schwartz would like to remember Chuck Bowman and Evelyn Henning. Anderson, I'd like to remember David Fields, Joey Ernie, and Julian Bailey.
nation who suffered an incredible loss on Friday with the senseless killing of so many in Newtown, Connecticut. So we light this large candle in memory of those who were lost in that tragedy this past week to lift up hope for that community and to our nation that uh, there will be another day and that the reason that we celebrate Christmas has so very little to do with uh, Christmas trees and lights, but has everything to do with the lights that have come into the world. And that, that light comes into the world in spite of the evil and the darkness. And so we light that light in memory of those lost souls. We have been blessed this evening. So this light represents uh, life. And not just life today, but eternal life. And that is what our hope is for this season, is that those that we have lost are for alive forevermore. And the certainty and the hope that there will be a day that we will rejoin them and all the other saints who have gone on before them. Let us conclude this time of, of uh, remembrance with the singing of Silent Night. And as, as the Stephen ministers come forward, they'll light the candles and, and we'll begin singing together. Thank you. 